In police work, we've got a lot of things we have to carry around, regardless of our assignment. So all sorts of stuff, and all of it weighs quite a bit. Now, normally our solution is the duty belt, and the duty belt works out great if we are in a uniform assignment and everybody can see that we're carrying a gun, and we don't have to look all that good. We we're wearing a uniform, we're wearing something that is set up by the agency. When we're going to court, or we've got some sort of plain clothes assignment, we have to go with something a little dressier. And the problem is that most dress belts, they're just not gonna carry all of this weight. If they do, they're going to start sagging or the buckle's gonna break. You can see here, this is the dress belt that I used for a long time. It's got a screw backing out of it. It's one of those like reversible dress belts. They don't work out that well for very long. And when you start putting a lot of weight on them, they're uncomfortable. Now the solution for that is to get a heavier like training belt, which is all well and good if you're in soft clothes and you don't have to look good, you're not going to court. But it doesn't work out very well with a shirt and a tie because people can see this and they automatically know, well, that person's carrying a gun or it just looks funky when you're wearing a shirt and a tie or a suit. So what we end up with is a leather belt made by a holster company that is just leather and it works out all right for a little while, but very quickly it starts to become way more flexible than you want to for a gun belt. So while you can carry all of the stuff around, the belt starts to sag. So today we're going to talk about a new type of belt that is a solution for a lot of the problems that we had with our other dress belts and solves a lot of the problems that police officers have when they have to carry all of this stuff and still dress up. All right, man, take a seat, buckle up. Ordinarily, we'd start with the uh, orientation of the car here, but we got calls pending and we got to get to them. So, we're rolling. We're going to have to learn on the way. All right, today, I... So here's kind of the crux of the issue with a dress belt, the traditional all-leather dress belt. When things start flopping over like this, they start digging into our sides, and then we stop carrying the things that we should be carrying to go to court. We end up just bringing the minimums. And the whole idea of carrying your stuff around and having a purpose-built gun belt for when you're off-duty or when you're going to court is carrying the stuff that you're meant to carry around with it. And what I recently found is a gun belt that solves both the problems of the gun flopping over under its own weight and the adjustments. This is from Core Essentials, it's called the X1, and it has a plastic stiffener in it that keeps everything standing upright and nothing flops off, and it makes it a lot more comfortable to carry all of our stuff around, and so we don't end up living things at home. By the way, it works, it's pretty simple. The thing comes in like a 54 inch length, and you cut the belt to the length you want. It's got little index marks on the back where you can index it to the length you want. So you cut it off and you flip open the buckle, slide the belt in, and close it up. And the buckle works like a big zip tie. There's a little ratcheting mechanism in the back here, just on a simple spring. And then there's a track in the back that's integral to this plastic stiffer that goes all the way through the belt that holds everything up. And when you slide it through, it latches in place in quarter inch increments. So you put the belt on and just slide this in. And if you feel a little thin that day, you click it in. And if you feel a little fat that day, you click it out. Or if you're wearing inside the waistband, you can bring it out a couple inches and you can decide exactly where you want that belt to sit. And unlike your average dressy belt that you get in a store like Kohl's or Sears, instead of being just pot metal that's been nickel plated or blackened, this one is actually a nice hunk of steel that it seems like you could pound nails with. So this is this is on there pretty strong. There's actually steel pins through it holding the components in place instead of little cheesy screws that are gonna back out on you or break off or rip through the leather. So here's the belt on. You just kind of slide it in like a big zip tie and tighten it to wherever you want. And then it sucks the pistol nice and close in. If you want it sucked further in, you can tighten it up. Or if you want a little more comfort, you can loosen it a little bit. And the great thing about it is because of the way it looks and how thin the belt is, you throw a jacket on and no one's going to be any wiser that you're carrying a whole bunch of stuff around because it looks like a normal dress belt. A normal belt. So when I first saw this, I figured this would be the perfect thing to use for court. It would also work really well for a lot of guys that I know. They're friends of mine that work in IT. They're always complaining that they have to put multi-tools and stuff on their belt, but they also have to abide by dress codes, and that causes them problems. I find myself wearing it all the time when I just go for family events and stuff, and it's become very useful 
for when I have a security side job and people don't want to see that I'm carrying a gun. Nobody sees this and immediately thinks, oh, he's got something attached to his belt. It does kind of blends in to everybody else, especially when you're in a suit and a tie or you're wearing a shirt and a tie and you've got a jacket over the top of it. So there's a link for it in the description down below. Go check it out. They've got a couple different uh, color. they got a brown one and a couple different styles of these belts and more styles coming out. But uh, this one seemed like it would be the most low profile for me, so that's the one I uh, opted for. If you like this type of content, go check out the Patreon page over there. The Patreon page, if you want to see more cool stuff, come from free field training. Throw a buck up there. You get to see these videos when they're rendered and not when they come out on YouTube. And you kind of get some behind-the-scenes looks at how all this type of stuff is made and some of the problems that I have with getting things done, you know, getting rid of wind noise and uh, finding locations to film at and things like that. And your donations over at Patreon, becoming a patron, joining the shift, helps me get things like this nice, beautiful table that I'm now using to do all my tabletops. So thank you all who have already gone over there. If you haven't, go check it out. There's some new rewards up on the Patreon page that some people might be interested in. You guys be safe, and we will see you next week. Well, now if you like that video, go ahead and subscribe, because there's a whole lot more to come. As soon as I uh, finish up these calls, go 10-8. County 291.